1976, no one would have thought that Apple, a small computer company that was started by two young college dropouts, would become the world's largest tech company in only 46 years. At first, Steve Wozniak just saw making and building computers as a hobby, but Steve Jobs saw it as an opportunity to start something great. Jobs wanted to produce and sell these computers that Wozniak made for profit. In 1976, Jobs and Wozniak officially started producing the Apple I. In 1977, they had sold about $774,000 in sales annually, but that number had greatly grown to $118 million annually in 1980. Almost exactly a year after they made the Apple I, Jobs and Wozniak released the Apple II in April of 1977. The Apple III was created in 1980 and roughly just did not have great success, nor did any great achievements come with it. After the Apple III failed, Apple made a comeback with the Apple Lisa in 1983, which had a more advanced design and was more technologically advanced, but it was priced at $9,995, which is a price no one wants to pay for a computer. On top of that, Steve Wozniak had no interest in running Apple, so he left and Apple brought in John Scully from PepsiCo to be president. Today we celebrate the first glorious anniversary of the information purification directives. We have created for the first time in all history a garden of pure ideology where each worker may bloom, secure from the pests of being January 24th, Apple Computer will introduce Macintosh. And you'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984. Just as things were looking bad for Apple, they came out with the Apple Macintosh in 1984, and it became very popular very quick. In fact, Apple had sold 70,000 units in a bit under four months. In 1988, Apple came out with the Macintosh Portable, which hardly sold any units because it was priced so high and it was just too big to carry around, which put Portable out of the picture. To combat the failure of the Macintosh Portable, Apple released the PowerBook. The PowerBook was an advanced version of the Macintosh Portable, and it was smaller and cheaper. Therefore, it sold more units. Today, the PowerBook is known for reinventing the laptop. Steve Jobs got back into talks with Apple, a company he had been away from for more than a decade. So uh, Apple and Next uh, did a deal for $400 million to buy Next software. Steve Jobs went back to Apple after 11 years, at first as an advisor, but his role grew when it lost its CEO. Almost immediately, Steve Jobs filled the void, filled the power vacuum, and essentially took control of the company. Jobs was named interim CEO, and he made some immediate changes. He eliminated dozens of projects and employees in an effort to cut costs. In August of 1998, he introduced the iMac. Instead of being a boring old box like every other computer in the market, it had this beautiful, curved, sculptural profile. And instead of just being bland beige like every other computer, it came in different, bright, fruit-flavored colors. The IMAX was a huge success. In its first six weeks, it became the fastest-selling Macintosh product in Apple history. In January 2000, he announced his permanent new position. I'm uh, pleased to announce today that I'm going to drop the interim title. The excitement at Apple wouldn't last. In 1997, Apple revealed the iMac and it was an instant hit. It was available in many different bright colors and it came with a G3 processor. And because of these options, 280,000 units were sold in the first six weeks. Hello, I'm 
Mac. And I'm a PC and I'm headed to the future. What? The future, really? Yes, Mac. Throughout human history, PCs have had to deal with freezing, crashing, error messages. I need to know if we're ever going to work the way we should. So I'm going to the year 2150. Wow, that's amazing. Well, good luck. I hope it works. Greetings, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. What? Future PC. Have they figured out how to fix our issues? Have they figured out how to make us as stable and as hassle-free as a Mac? The future PC just froze. Oh, so that answers that question. In 2006, the iMac with Intel CPU was released and it set a path for design and popularity to modern Macs. On June 29, 2007, Apple would reveal a project that had been years in the making and it would dominate the mobile phone market. Today, we're introducing three revolutionary products for this class. The first one is a widescreen iPod with touch controls. The second is a revolutionary mobile phone. And the third is a breakthrough internet communications device. So, three things widescreen iPod with touch controls, a revolutionary mobile phone, and a breakthrough internet communications device. An iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. An iPod, a phone. Are you getting it? These are not three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. On that day in June, Apple released the iPhone. It had a much larger screen than many other mobile phones at the time. It had OS X, which was Mac software going to a small mobile phone, and it had multi-touch, which is the technology that allows touchscreen capabilities in other phones and devices today. In 2010, Apple came out with the iPad that, like the iPhone, had a large screen and had multi-touch. One year later, Jobs presented the iPad 2 on March 2, 2011, and then sadly passed away a few months later due to pancreatic cancer on October 5, 2011. After Jobs passed away, Tim Cook was appointed as Apple's new CEO, and he immediately got to work and revealed the third generation iPad in early 2012. Tim Cook, Cook is still the CEO of Apple today. Apple has had many accomplishments since Tim Cook became CEO, such as fingerprint identification, face recognition, and extensive camera development. New technology is still being developed by Apple, and Apple will continue to develop new technology for many years to come.